Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna talk about beginning with Kotlin, officially, finally. Thank God. I say officially because I've got myself a book about the language. It's called Kotlin in Action. It's a great book. It's a complicated book. But then again, it's the concepts themselves that are complicated, not, not, not Kotlin specifically, you know. I'm having difficulty with the concepts themselves. It's just the way that Kotlin implements these concepts is what's explained in the book. Not, it doesn't bring anything, wow, new or something mind-blowingly new. It's just another way of doing things. In any case, today's video is not going to be anything complicated. It's just going to be functions and variables in Kotlin. How they're written, basically, and how they behave. But mostly how they're written. I really like Kotlin so far, and I think it's a very concise language in the way that you write it. It's very compact. There's little to no boilerplate that I've seen so far, and I really love that, and I love you guys. So there's that. So let's begin in concepts. Supposedly, as the book says, Kotlin is a new programming language, well, as people say, and but it targets the Java platform. So Kotlin is concise, safe, pragmatic, and focused on interoperability with Java code. That's amazing. So from what I've tried so far, you can have the convert to Kotlin function from inside uh, Android's, uh, from inside IntelliJ IDEA. You can get the community edition, it's for free. The professional edition costs money. So there's a convert to Kotlin function, which allows you to convert a whole file into Kotlin. You do not, as the book says, as the this book is by the two core developers of Kotlin. So there's part of the people who made the language. As they claim, you do not have to press anything or, I mean, you do not have to change anything after you convert. You just press run and you're good. So they are really, really, really very focused on interoperability with this language. They have to make it work with Java. That's one of their selling points. So the target platforms are server-side, Android, and anywhere that Java can run. This is where Kotlin can run. On the server, on Android, and practically anywhere that Java can, Kotlin can. Just like Java, Kotlin is a statically typed programming language. This means that the type of every expression in a program is known at compile time, not at runtime, as opposed to dynamically typed languages. So the compiler can validate the existence of these methods and fields that you're trying to access on the objects you're using. It can validate that as you're typing. It doesn't have to go, just like Java. You know, you can't put an integer inside a string. So they do have types, but in Kotlin, you don't necessarily have to specify the type of every variable, ex variable explicitly. Uh, the type of variable can be automatically determined by the compiler. So you can omit the declaration. You just say var f is equal to 5, and it'll figure out that this is an integer, not a string. All right? Or val, as you'll see later. It's either val or var. And the ability of the compiler to determine these types is actually called type inference. Now, this, this phrase I used to hear, this term I used to hear before, and I used to think like, wow, this sounds complicated. It's not. It's just this is what it is. It infers the type from the context. So Kotlin is functional and it's object-oriented, as the book says, as we will see later on if I make any more episodes of this kind. Because honestly, I'm liking the language. I feel excited about it. It is exciting as a language. It's just starting 1.1. We're still on 1.1. And everything's just taking shape right now. And it's not by any means something that's dodgy or, or a new language or something that's weak that you shouldn't trust yet. Not at all. There's a huge company behind it. There are people working really hard to get this going. And Google officially adopted this language. That says something in my book. So, let's get on with the code. All right. So you got your Kotlin plugin into IntelliJ IDEA, you're ready to go, you ran your first program, or you didn't yet, doesn't matter. What we're going to do here is explain just a simple Hello World program. Alright? 
just what everybody needs to know, what everybody try, tries out at, in the beginning stages. So let's go ahead and do that. The way you write functions or you declare functions in Kotlin is you just write fun because functions are fun. Yay. So you're going to call it main because this is the main function. It takes as arguments one parameter, it's called args, and then a colon. It's of type array, parameterized as a string. All right? So it takes one parameter, it's called args. The type of this parameter is an array of type string. And then you go like this. Very simple. Very nice. We're going to do print ln. Hello, world. Nope. There we go. There are no semicolons in Kotlin. You can put them there, but they left it up to you so you could have a holy war over them. They are not required. So you see the syntax, it's very simple, but then again the task is very simple. The print ln here, if we try to access this, it's actually a wrapper for Java's system.out.println and it takes any. Now this means literally any type. And it is nullable because of the question mark. Now we'll see that later on. So far we have the print ln. Let's run this. So this is all nice and dandy. You got your brackets here. You got everything you need. But in Kotlin sometimes when there's an only an expression statement um, I think it's called uh, an expression uh, block body. Yeah, that's what they call it. So if there's only one expression, you can do something like this. Very cool. This this can run. If you run it again. So this is really compact and really nice. Just the beginning parts of the language. As you can see, you just declare function main is equal to this thing. Because all expressions in Kotlin, I mean all declarations in Kotlin are expressions. They're not statements except for for loops. So this print ln, it returns something. This guy returns something. If we look here, if we, hold on, if we go like this, okay, val print value, okay, print, print value. This should give us the type of what was returned from the print ln. That's why we can say is equal to print ln, etc. It's not like an if statement where there's no return value. There is a return value here. It's a unit, which is void in Kotlin. It's nothing. It's just a unit of something. All right? Or you can go like this. Uh, no, we'll keep the print and say Java class. This guy gives you the instance which this object is of, which this field is of. So you can find the class that this guy belongs to. So it's going to say unit. I think it's going to be the same output or just unit. Ah, class Kotlin unit. Fine. That's cool. So this is all very simple. Let's define a real function. Max. Again, fun max. Now over here we're going to say a variable called a of type integer and the variable called b of type integer. I'm going to open the brackets or since this is going to be one statement, as you will see, I'll just leave it like this, is equal to, I think it's going to be one statement, yeah. So if A is bigger than B, we want A to be returned. If B is bigger than A, we want B to be returned. Now something's missing here, actually. It's the return type of the function, which is this. So this is where you specify the return type of the function. Forget the equals sign. You have this function. There you go. This is how you do it. So if we wanted this main to return something, we can go like this. But now we're missing something here because we're not returning anything. 
Okay, you can't because this conflicts with something else. Whatever. But this is how you specify the return type of a function at the end with a colon. Same colon as the one that specifies the type of an argument to a function. The same one. And it sticks to the last thing you declared. So there's B and you stick it here. You stick it here, okay? And there's B and you, you just place a colon here. In other cases, you're going to have to do, go like this as the per the convention where you're uh, extending or inheriting a class. You have to have a space between the, the final thing you declared here and the, the, the actual class that you're inheriting. Okay? So let's put these back. Let's take out the brackets again. And we're going to say if a is bigger than b a okay else b done that's it all right we're going to call it here print ln uh who is the biggest hmm Here's string formatting. I think you can do this. Yes. Usually, string formatting is used in this way. Let's never mind this, this sentence first. Let's have another function, which set, another print statement, which says... Uh, Actually, let's de declare two variables, the a and the b, and then we pass them to the function. So val, val means value. Var means variable. So we need a val here. The difference between them is that a val is immutable. You cannot say first is equal to 5, or let's call, just call it a. Okay, for a is equal to 5, val b is equal to 40. If you go here and say equals to 30, you can't. Cannot be reassigned because it's immutable. You cannot mutate it to something new. Alright? If, but if you change this to var, now it's fine. Okay? So we're just going to keep it as val and print out their values here. A is, and this is where the string formatting comes into play. Here's the A. And B is B. Now you need the curly braces because it's expecting you to write something more than just B. But if you're just echoing or you just want the value of one field, you can go like this. Yes. So both of these work. Let's comment out this line run. I think this is called string formatting, yeah, but I think it has a more complex name, or string somethinging, I don't know. Okay, there we go, A is 5 and B is 40, using the same curly or no curly braces here. So let's take out that line again, let's uncomment this line, who is the biggest between A and B. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Very good. 40 is the biggest. So our max function works. Amazing. One more thing is that you can even with go, for go, the return type of the function because it's inferred by what's inside. Type inference. This is how strong the, the, the Kotlin compiler is. This is how powerful the machine they have built here is. It can, it can predict what you're going to do. It can write the program for you. In fact, you can even write just fun and it'll understand that you mean the max font. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So you can just not mention the return type here. So we're just going to run this. Of course, it's going to work, but it's just, just for the sake of, you know, 
you know. So, mind you, in Kotlin, if, if is an expression. It's not a statement. An expression returns something. Okay? A statement is... A statement does not... It's a, it's a top-level thing. It has... It has its purpose in the block that exists and it does not return something. It does not have its own value. Alright? Um, so, yeah. In Java, all control statements, all control structures, sorry, I'm reading right off the book here, are statements. In Kotlin, most con control structures, as I said, except for loops, the do while, the do, the for, those are expressions. Okay? Everything is an expression. Okay, so we're done with the max function, and uh, that's cool. Let's see more variables. You can have, uh, this would create a set. Set 1, set of 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5. If you go here and say, set one dot java class val hash map is equal to map of now this is cool one two one two 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 forty five two forty five this is a map print ln set I mean hash map dot java class so let's print out these guys so it's gonna be a set and it's gonna be a hash map I'm gonna have a list of course as such my list to list of yes nope list of one you can have this here's double anything you want here's the char oh it printed huh oh, there we go can you get out of the way please linked hash set linked hash map pretty pretty cool shit print ln my list dot let's just try this out let's see what happens to string join to string uh, oh never mind this is complicated okay let's just print ln my list dot entries nope dot size oh by the way lists this one list of let's go into that uh, it's a list okay it's a java list it's a collection just like java's collection it's the same collections class as java's the exact same one but it has several other functions that are related by uh, to functions on these collections which kotlin has made for you they're extension functions, so they're, you'll you'll know more about extension functions later. But so it's the same collections. This so you have the iterator, you have the size, you have the uh, the join. No, I mean the copy. Yeah, all of that stuff. Let's print the size. It's gonna be something. And that's about it for functions and variables. It's just very basic. It's very easy so far I hope you enjoyed it I did when I first met her the language and but that's that's about it I don't want to go anything further because uh, it's just it's considerable chunk right now just to understand the syntax to get your head around it I know it's very simple but to get used to typing like this it, it needs a little time that's all the time we got today bros uh, I'll catch you in the next video hope you enjoyed it See you next time. Bye-bye.